once I've done my rough in and out up in the player window and bring it down, uh, I might find that I need a little bit more trimming. So what I'm going to do here is, is show you how easy it is to be able to trim a clip once it's already down on the timeline. To do so, all I have to do is place my mouse at the end of the clip. I see the cursor change. I hold down my left mouse button and I can move the clip either direction and be able to either add or take away video. And it works the exact same way on both ends. If I'm a keyboard person and I want to be able to do it with the keyboard instead of doing it with the mouse, all I have to do is move the controller to where I want it. And once I have my desired out point, I can use the trim keys. The trimming the out point key is the M as a Michael key. And as you can see, it trimmed it right off. If I wanted to trim the end point, I could move the cursor to where I want my desired end point to be, and then I use the N as a Nancy key, and when I select it, you can see that it trims it off, and I now have my new end point. Okay. Now that we've put a clip down on the timeline, and we've actually taken a look on how to uh, place it down and, and trim it afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and place another clip right beside it. Uh, then I'm going to show the trimming techniques with, another, with two clips on the timeline so you can kind of see how they work uh, in conjunction with each other. I'm going to go ahead and take another clip and I'm going to double click on it from the bin window. And you'll notice that the clip I'm using now is a close-up because I don't really want to put a, a wide shot and a close uh, two wide shots uh, next to each other because that wouldn't look very good. But I'm going to do the same thing we did with the last clip. I'm going to bring over the... Uh, bring over the controller to where I want it. I'm going to select an endpoint. I'm going to bring uh, my controller down to where I want my rough out to be. I select an out point. And this time I'm just going to, with my mouse, drag it down uh, to the timeline and place it right at the end of the other clip. And as you can see, they sit there right next to each other. Now I didn't mention this before, so I'd like you to see this. You'll notice that the video is right here. Uh, but I've set up Eddie uh, to where I can split the audio off to where channel 1 and channel 2 are on two different tracks to where I'd be able to manipulate each one of those separately. Now that I have these clips down here and I want to be able to, uh, want to, be able to uh, trim them, uh, you'll watch that if I once again move my controller on the first clip to, to redo my out point and to place it at a different spot than it is now, if I hit the M key, which was that trim out key, you'll see that it causes a gap to sit right there. Now, if I have this gap, it's a simple process of right-clicking in the gap and going to what is intuitively called Delete Gap, and I select that, and you can see that the gap is, is gone. It moves everything else from the right over to the left to close it up. However, let me go ahead and undo this and redo this again by holding down the Alt key and then selecting the M key, the Trim Out key, and you'll see that I do it in one step instead of three steps to be able to make it all work together. So now I'm going to do the end point uh, on this clip. I'm going to get it right to where I want it. I'm going to hold down the uh, Alt key and I'm going to select the N as a Nancy key. It trims and moves it right over and now I have my clips just the way that I want them ready to uh, do any other effect that I would like to do. Now that we have two clips on the timeline, what we're going to do is, is that we're going to place an effect between them, a transition. Now, let me say something about transition here and, and even other effects, to be perfectly honest with you. You want to be careful how you use them. Uh, just because you have it doesn't mean you have to use it. It needs to be in an appropriate place that is going to call for the effect not to be the center of attention, but to enhance the story that you're trying to tell. Uh, so be careful in using transitions and effects to where it doesn't overtake the story and it becomes the main emphasis instead of your story. To place the effect that I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my effect palette. I'm going to select transition and then 2D. And all of my transitions are on the right hand side. I'm going to take a dissolve and I'm going to pull it with the left mouse button until it highlights between the two clips. When I let go of it, you'll now see that there's a one second transition or one second dissolve between my two clips. Let's take a look at it and see how, see how it looks when it plays back. You'll see that I just placed my cursor right before the dissolve, and of course we play it. And there it is. Once I have a transition on the timeline, if I want to be able to change the duration of that transition, or even its settings to where it looks the way that I would desire it to look, I simply take my mouse pointer to the middle of the transition, I right click, and I can either pick duration, 
or I can pick settings. Once I pick settings, you'll see that a options window comes up for that transition with all the different options that it has, as well as presets. At this point, you can uh, play with those uh, variables until it looks the way that you want it to look. Now that we've placed a transition between two clips, I'd like to show you how to place a filter on a clip and then manipulate that filter afterwards. Canopus has always been known for their filters. Their engineering team is superb, and they have always given us filters that when placed on the timeline look completely and totally professional, such as white balance. To place white balance on a clip, what I'm going to do is in the same effect window that I got my transitions from, I'm going to go up to video filters and then select color correction. You'll see that I have my color correction filters listed over here on the right. To place the filter on a clip, very simply grab it with the left mouse button, drag it over on top of the clip, let go of it, and the filter's now applied. Now, you'll see that the timeline doesn't look much different, but if you look up in the information window, you see that now white balance is listed. All I have to do to manipulate this filter is to double click where it says white balance in the information window, and as you can see, the options window comes up. Now, I could play with this all day long and trying to get it just to the right color, but you'll notice that the radio button right here that says auto, when this is set, all I have to do is come over to my clip, pick an area that I think should be white or should be white, select it, and as you can see, the white balance is done automatically.